Oh well, I was trapped in traffic actually, yeah. but it's it's cleared off now. The road marshals walked on it. You know how crazy it can be in this town, yeah. This traffic is so busy. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna go now. So don't worry, just like yeah, I know. Don't worry, just keep coming. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, barring another traffic situation, I should be home in the next. Uh, 10 to 12, 15 minutes. Great. So what are you doing? If you tell me. I just go upstairs and change, then get dinner in. <laughs> I love you much, babe. See you soon now. Yeah, I love you.
Has suffered temporary loss of sight due to the substance in his brain and eyes. And what about the pregnancy? She understood.
Monkeys. I tried to stop him, but he just bashed him. Seat when my daughter is lying hopelessly in the hospital? What kind of a man are you, John? Tell me! A man who cannot protect his own wife! I beg your pardon. Please, sir, with all due respect, I'm not going to allow you to walk into my office and address me like that. How do you want me to address you? Eh? Tell me! When you cannot do the simple task of protecting your wife! With all due respect, my daughter! Sir. You and I! Know how much I love Ella and how much I am willing to cater and protect her, even if it means me putting my life on the line. All right? So, what happened to my wife is much more painful to me. Just like it is to every other person who appreciates what Ella stands for. So, you walking into my office this moment with these erratic accusations will not do it. All right? This is not the best way to talk to a man whose wife is dealing with so much right now. A man whose wife almost lost her life. A man whose wife almost lost her pregnancy. And is on the verge of losing her sanity. So please, sir. Don't make me get this way right now. Was Ella pregnant? Yes, she was. Ella was carrying her first child. Right? She was brutally raped by those. Those goods. So if you really still want to talk, so you can sit down. Please, you have to be big to her. Please don't get her what's up. The doctor says she may dress. Please. I don't want her to be disturbed. It's okay. I won't be long, don't worry. Hello. It's me. Yes, sir. I heard about what happened. I had to fly in immediately. John explained everything to me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, honey. Alright, sir. The drugs will take out during the next three hours. I will have to report back to the hospital. I'll be back once it's close time for my work. Alright, thank you very much. You've been um, you've been quite helpful, I must say. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much.
completed. I'm sorry, madam. I understand the trauma you're passing through. But uh, we need those answers to help us track the people behind the attack. Madam, can you remember what happened that day? Can you remember anything good thing at all? Sorry, madam, but I uh, need to do madam, something. Please. I really don't think this is a good time, all right? So, if you don't mind, can we please reschedule? Okay, sir. Are you still there? Right here, madam. You have to find them. Detective, you need to find them. Find them. Those, those idiots that let their guilty hands on me. And my innocent child. You have to find them. You need to find them, detective. You must know, do anything for my innocent baby. John, tell him. Tell him to find them. Tell him to find them what they did to me. No, I'll be there. Tell him to tell him to find them. He needs to find them. Tell him to find them. This food. I could get them to make you something else, you know. I don't want to eat. 
Why? What is it? Huh? Please talk to me. Please. I'm not okay. I'm, I'm not fine. I'm All right. Nothing is fine. Calm down. Calm down. All right. You'll be okay, I promise you. You will be fine. It's just a matter of time, baby. Believe me, you will be fine. All right. Please. Please. Sit down. Let's eat. Yeah. Please. I don't want to eat. You haven't had something for quite a while now. Please, I beg you, sit down. Let's, let's eat something. Please, I beg you. This is really nice, you know. Please. I don't want anything. I don't want, I want to be useful. Oh, you are useful. Come on. Huh? You can't be this way now, darling. You are very useful. Okay? Stop letting your thoughts lie to you. Hmm? Please. Can we at least eat? Huh? No. Alright. It's okay. I'll just um, take you upstairs and then get Anita to clean this place. I'll probably make you something else later in the day. Will that be okay? Huh? Please. Please. I don't want to get it all upset, okay? Please. Alright. So let's just a uh, bit to your right now. A bit to your right. What is going on? No, Detective, I don't want to begin to think that you guys are not competent enough to handle this case. What, 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 what would you have me say? Alright, for how long would I have to sit back and wait for you guys to come through us as regards proper information? Don't talk to me about being agitated. I'm a very agitated man right now, all right? It is my wife who was attacked and raped, and I had lost an one child in the process, and you're telling me about being agitated? What are you talking about? Well, Detective, as much as you claim to be doing your job, I'm not going to sit back here for a while and wait for you to talk about it, all right? We need to do something fast. I need to know the people behind that act. Just have to take it easy, and she also needs a lot of rest. But if she was moved, then she has to make use of the crushes. Oh, that's my wife. Alright, great. Um, but apart from what you just said, we need to get her more medication. Oh, not at all. No, she's okay. Just the way she is. Alright, thank you. You've been far too kind. Thank you so very much. 
mm-hmm. especially for having to, uh, to stay here with us for a couple of days. I think. Um, can I have the file from the Purple Ribbon Entertainment people for their bid? Um, when did this come in? Yesterday. What time yesterday? Um, 6 p.m. I'm telling you about it. John! Hey, what's that? What about you, Ray? You can go back to your office. I'll go through this and I'll let you know. Alright, thank you very much. It's what I'm hearing true. <laughs> what can I say? But we're dealing with it. This is serious. So, what's the police saying about this? This? <laughs> uh, promises. Still investigating. You know, you know the society we live in. Right, um, but um, we'll be fine, I guess. These guys, you can never really count on them, can you? So, uh, how are they doing? Um, fine. I must say she's still grappling with um, the trauma, but I'm hoping that in time she would, you know, beat it. You know, Ella is a strong woman, so I'm positive. Poor soul. I can sit here and I can only imagine what she's going through right now. It's been it's been something as well. Um, we thank God. We thank. So, um, how was Sierra Lord? How was, um, how was the beat? Well, that, the beating went well. You know, it's just that, um, the foreign office in Sierra Lord actually demanded an extra fund. Oh, okay. So I could complete the contract bid. And that's why I came, you know, hoping that you could help me with some fun to complete it. Come on, Nosa. Come on. <laughs> I mean, given what just happened, really. Come on, you know that's not possible. You know, I mean, not at this point. I hope you do understand. Yeah. Yeah, I I understand what you're going through right now. Yeah, and even Ella, who is in the middle of all of this, is not, um, is not in the right frame of mind, you know, to even make an impute. If you understand the game, what I'm talking about. So it's, my hands are tied. I understand. And that itself for me is my worry, knowing that Ella, who is in charge, can't do anything. And, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, well, but I believe you're a shrewd businessman, so something would certainly come up and uh, you, would, um, you would get through this one again. You know? But along the line, if there's any way I can help, why not? What are friends for? I will surely help you. Okay? I was setting out a few things before you walked in, but now that you're here, I'm thinking lunch, are you okay? Yeah, sure, sure, why not? Lunch. All right, all right. one second. Just, uh... Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
Madam, update me on the activities at the company. Oh, sure. Well, um... Yeah. Thank you. How's my wife? Sir, she has refused to eat all since this afternoon. After the barista left, I took the food to her several times, but she she will not want to eat. The barista was here today? Yes, sir. So why then has she refused to eat? Sir, I, mean, I don't know. I took the food to her. All right, I'll microwave the food and take this to my study. I'll just pick up her upstairs. Bye. You don't have to continue this way, I beg you, all right? Look, I know how you feel, Hazel. No, you. John. You have no idea how I, how I feel. Okay. <laughs> Baby, I am connected to you. I know how you feel, all right? No. I know your heart is breaking, but please, get yourself together. John, I am lonely. Can't you see? I am lonely. I've been caught up on the reality of this world. I can't see anything. for you for the rest of our days. I give you my word of that one, please. Will you assure us to get away the fact that I am now my Will you take away the fact that I am totally useless? Will you take away the fact that I can no longer do anything for myself? So, will you take away the fact that I might not be able to see the world the same way again? I know, darling, please. Stop. Huh? I, mean, I understand. But will you be like this? <laughs> Fix this for us. Huh? And will you doubt the love that I have for you here? No, it was not. It would not. Maybe. I am here. You'll we'll always be here. I am your husband and I love you. Okay. Nicole. Please, I beg you. All right. Stop. I want you to know. A lethal without your sight. Update me on the activities at the company. All right, great. So, are you impressed? I don't know. I just wish I could make use of my eyes you know, so I can do things myself.
Hey, Paul. Oh, Mr. Fred, you're welcome. And point of correction, Mr. Paul. I am the managing director of the company. Your immediate boss. I must be addressed so. The fact that my daughter, your CEO, is now incapacitated does not mean we should not maintain order and decorum around here. Did I make myself clear? Okay, okay, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Now, I want you to organize a meeting of all the managerial staff in the next 30 minutes. Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry, MD. Is the meeting that important? Will you shut up? I gave you an instruction. Your duty is to carry out my instructions and not to ask me silly questions. Is the meeting that important? very sad that something happened to my sister and no one deemed it necessary to inform me about it. I had to find out about it in the papers. Well, that's, um, that's also coming as a shock to me because your father was pretty much around when it happened. So I had assumed that he would uh, maybe pick up a phone and call you, tell you about it, but uh, it is what it is. Well, he didn't. Anyways, that's all in the past now. What's very important now is the involvement of the police in all this. Have they arrested anyone yet? Not at all. It's been quite disappointing to know that uh, the police are yet to step up their game on this case. But what can I say? It speaks of the kind of society we live in. Something must be done about it. I mean, my sister cannot be left in such a, a hopeless state and the culprits out there free. No. In fact, I think you have failed to step up your game. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah. You want to be the new lady? Oh, yes, sir. What is your name? Anita, sir. Okay, I am your madam's father. Oh. My name is Sir Fred Awebe. Okay, I didn't know, sir. I'll let her know that you're here. Too. Okay. Oh, come in. Um, please, um, there's one man downstairs. Who, he said it's your father that he wants to see you. Oh, bring him up. Okay. you since you came back from the hospital. Daddy, please don't give me any excuses, okay? But why? Because I don't need it. What difference would it make anyway? Sweetie, I am so sorry if I did hurt your feelings. I'm sorry. Daddy, it's not about you or anybody hurting my feelings. It's about my hopelessness. I am no longer relevant to myself or people around me. Sweetie, if you sound this way, why then do you have me? You? Yes, me. And a whole lot of other people who love you. Of course, Ella, you are still relevant to all of us. Ella. Yes, Dad. I came to discuss a very important issue with you. What is it? It's about the company's affairs. You see, I'm considering that, based on your present situation, as the CEO of the company, someone close to you should stand in for you and then carry out all the functions as though... Wow. Who do we have here? Girl, is that you? Yeah, it's me, of course. Hi, Dad. Hi. I didn't know you would be back too, so... Dad and I are in the middle of a very important discussion and I think you should be part of it. Okay. What's up, Dad? Anita! 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 Can you feel me? I can't take 
of a deep sleeper I am. Sorry. Anita, why did you leave this house without informing me? Um, uh, 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 Madam, um, Auntie Gil sent me to... to like, Auntie Gil, I wasn't asking you! Listen, even if Anita had to run errand for you, she has to tell me first! She's under my authority as far as this house is concerned! Anita is accountable to no one else but me! Me! Okay. Understood. Anita, yes, ma'am. You have a lot of things to say. Put that down. Jump this thing. Okay. Take off this. Sweetheart, I want you to keep an eye on Anita from now. Why would you say that, darling? I don't know, but this issue of her leaving the house without letting me know is it's putting me on the edge. Well, darling, you shouldn't be that way. Even your sister Gail admitted to having sent her out. No, even at that, I still do not trust that story. Darling, are you for any reason worried about your safety? Yes, I am. I'm worried. I, in fact, I think we should have security details around the house. Oh, come on. So that, look, it has a... <laughs> Darling, it hasn't come to that, all right? Don't get yourself walked up. You're fine, you're safe, okay? There's nothing wrong here. There's nothing happening here. Listen to me. I don't want you to blow this thing out of proportion. It's nothing. I'm always here, you know? No, John, you're not always at home.
is always here too, right? Even her presence is not enough convention for me not to distrust my surroundings. Why would you say that? What do you mean? I don't trust anyone else apart from you. Not even my sister. She, 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 I hope I'm not exactly. I was just asking Anita here where exactly you sent her. Honestly, I'm actually surprised. Why the insistence? I ran out of makeup stuff, so I sent her to get some from the supermarket for me. I don't understand what's wrong with that. Gil, please don't get this wrong, all right? I expect you to understand your sister's psychological and emotional position by now. Given what has happened in the, the past few weeks, you know she would react if she just wakes up and then looks around and this girl who is meant to be by her side at all times just suddenly gets up and go without any kind of information. That's my point. Alright? She is answerable to someone. She, she just can't get up and go. Anita. Try as much as you can to be careful in this house. That way you don't trigger the wrong signals. Yes, sir. Do you understand me? Yes. So, as your boss said, be very careful around the house, especially with the things you say. Am I clear? Yes. Did he see it? No. Did he see the phone? Mm -mm. Are you sure? Yes. appears too quiet for my comfort, so I decided to go out and find you. Oh, look at you. Darling, you know I wouldn't sleep if I don't see you first, if I don't speak with you, if I don't kiss you. Mm -hmm. You know, I will always stop by here first. Mm -hmm. yeah. What time is it? Um, it's, um, I think, past midnight, really late. I want you to take me to our room. Is there a special reason for that? No, no reason. I just want you to take me to our bedroom. Okay. All right then. 
I just lead you. Touch me like you used to. Make me feel like we still belong together. Who makes my heart beat? Munya Moma. Okay. What is it? You know I don't like it when you get like this. It breaks my heart. Bella, listen to me. If there was something I could do within my power to make you feel the way you used to, darling, I would do it. Uh -huh. I know. Realizing the fact that life can never be the same again. This it seems so dark and you leave me. Alan, please, don't talk like that, okay? Don't talk that way. I don't agree with you. That's not true. I know you don't like it when I sound this way. But it's the truth. 
Life can never be the same again. Can't you see? I'll perpetually remain in this dark prison for the rest of my days. And who knows? Someday you might get tired and move on with your life. I don't agree with you, baby. I never say that again to me. I don't agree with you. Where is your faith? Where is, where is that conviction in what you and I believe in? Do you remember the vow we took on the altar the day we got married? Baby, it was for better for us. All right. To be together till death. But that's the that's the depth of the belief that I have in what you and I have going. I love you. I mean, I love you with every part of me. I'm not going nowhere. Do you hear me? Okay. I want you to know, right here, right now, that I'll always be by your side. Because you're the center of my world. You're my wife. My everything. Okay? For as long as I am with you, nothing else matters. Nothing else. Because I love you that much. All right? It's okay, baby. Things will fall with you, okay? It's okay. Ella, but she wasn't in her room. Okay. Where is she? Oh, Ella is fine. Um, went to last night. She slept in my room. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That means my sister is gradually overcoming her emotional stress. <laughs> well, if that's how you see it. <laughs> okay. But I'll tell you what, it's not um, been easy. Really? Mm -hmm. What am I missing? So you want to do it, yeah? Yeah. All right, that might have to be because I'm running late for work as days. Okay. No problem. Where is she though? Is she still in the room? Absolutely. Okay. Um, just um, that um, I need to have to clear this place. All right. All right. I'm off. Okay, you can't break there. All right, you sit down. Anita! Anita! Yes, ma'am. Come on, this place. Cry the place! What is it? Um, Auntie Gil. It's just that I went to my madame's room and she's not there. I don't know if she went somewhere. I thought so too. But she's okay. Okay, everything is fine. Just clear the place. Clear the place. Oh. 
Who is there? John, is that you? John? It's not John. <laughs> it's me, Gail. <sighs> Gail, how did you know I was here? Uh, I checked up on you earlier on and John told me you slept here last night. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, I bought you some tea. Uh, um, where is uh, Anita? Downstairs doing her chores. I want that girl out of this house. Why? Nothing. I just want her out. Like, she's no longer necessary in the house. At least you are here now and no need keeping a stranger whom you're not even sure of. Ella, don't you think you're allowing your emotions to overcloud your judgment? Girl, this is my house. Anita is a personal aide and domestic staff under my authority. And I have every right to say what I want and what I don't want. And Anita at this moment is one thing I don't want around my house. Do you understand? It's okay. I understand. Okay? Calm down, you don't need to get yourself all worked up over this. All right? <sighs> um, anyway, here's your tea. By the way, have you spoken to John about dad's proposition yet? No. But why? Ella, you need someone who's going to handle the affairs of the company since you're- Girl, I have not deemed it fit to consider that proposition. Till I speak with my lawyer. That idea will have to be stayed till then. For now, I don't want to talk any further. I want to be left alone. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to bother you any further. You don't need all that stress. Okay? Um, so, yes, we'll see. I, yeah. It's hard to be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I added extra honey in it for, you know, to help calm your nerves. All right? Thank you. All right. Bye. That's the more reason she need to allow someone else to step in and coordinate the affairs of the company for the moment. Don't you understand? No, I don't understand because my I... wife never mentioned this to me. Because my wife is here to discuss this with me and it's really, really fresh. I guess she's still skeptical about the idea. And that is why I have come here to sensitize you as the husband on the need for her to allow someone in the family especially me, her father, to step in as her proxy is in her own best interest and for the interest of the entire family. I see. But what I do not understand is how my wife will possibly, or should I say readily, allow anyone else to handle the affairs of this company when the office of the barrister is already undertaking that function at the moment. It it doesn't add up. Barrister Mildred is just a bloody lawyer who knows little or nothing about the managerial procedures involving handling big establishments like ours. She doesn't. Think about it. Absolutely, darling. Yes, I heard you. I told your father Okay, that as a matter of fact, that before you take such decisions, first off, you would have to consult your attorney. John, please, I don't need to see my attorney for anything. And no one should go and see her on my behalf. As a matter of fact, I need to have a board meeting at the company. Can you please inform Paul, my admin manager, about the meeting? John, are you still there? <laughs> 
Really, I don't know what the game is. I don't know what his plans are, but um, I believe you can handle it. I trust you that much. Please take me downstairs to the garden. I want to sit down for a while. Oh, why you? You don't want to stay here? I just need some fresh air. Alright, well, um, why not? If it makes you happy. Okay, so let's, um... What are you doing here? Anita? Yes, ma'am. Which Anita? Where is she? What is she doing here? Don't just stand there. You come again. John, what are you doing? I told you I don't want this girl in my house again. Anita! Weren't you told your services are no longer needed? Okay, fine. In case you don't know. I don't want you in my house again. And I want you to leave here in the next five minutes. Well, so had calm down. She can't leave me. It's really late. She can't leave. Okay, fine. Then she should leave first thing in the morning. Um, Ella. Who? Girl, please, just stay out of this. John. Easy now. Easy. Calm down, all right? What is she doing here? Don't worry. It will be sorted out. Don't upset yourself. I do it with my left. All right. You I don't want her to touch me. She won't touch you. All right. I'm boarding. To the left, to the left, to the left. Is it not? Yeah. I, I don't want her to touch you. She won't touch you. I'll help you. Good. Let's keep straight. <laughs> Please, 
I don't want you like this. I don't, I don't, I don't want you like this, all right? Please get hold of your emotions, okay? You really have to. Please. I'm scared. I'm scared. There's really no need to be scared, okay? I am here for you. Look, I will always be here for you. Because I love you that much. Stop crying, I beg you. Please. I want to speak with Pastor Mildred. All right. I will call her for you. Right? First thing in the morning. No. I want to speak with her now. Darling, please. Don't be like that, all right? This woman is sleeping. I so speak right now. It's past 1 a.m., past 2 a.m. It's really late. Please be patient, I beg you. Okay, I will call her first thing in the morning and you can talk to her all you want. You can all. Please, darling, stop crying. Please. You know, you break my heart when you get like this. Huh? Please, baby. Darling. I will call her. Come on. What difference does it make? Plenty. It will make a lot of difference, darling. It will. Because I'm here with you. We'll always be here for you. All right? I want to sleep.
can't stand the sadness anymore. No more. There must be a way to find strength in this weakness. There has to be a way to find light in this darkness. You could be down, but it's not over. When there is life, you could start all over. Cause it's not over. No, it's not over. Who tell me who is there? Can you see me? Ooh. Can you feel me? Can you feel me? Who is there? Whoa. Who is there? No, no, I can't take this. No, I can't take this. I can't stand this. No, no, no. Fendi, darling. Let's do. I'm sure you don't know Elas. Can you say? I'm quite sure I've never met him before. How are you, young man? I'm very well, sir. Thank you. Quite a handsome young man you've got there, Ella. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I trust my daughter. <laughs> she have a good eye. Okay. Anyway. Thank you. Ah, yes, that's true. <clears throat> what was that girl? Well, it's obvious all the attention is on Ella and her fiance, and I'm getting none. Two people, you know, also me. Well, don't be jealous. Hmm? I'm not jealous. Don't worry. Your own time will soon come. You don't have to be jealous, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, sir. Um, sir, the reason we're here is to uh, let you know that uh, we've picked a date for our wedding, right? Yes. I'm, like, I'm so happy, my child. Thank you. Just mention any way you want not to have your family. You will have it. Thank you so <laughs> much. Thank I you. Trust my mom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Go and get your husband something. I know you know the way. Nice. <laughs> I love you. Okay. I love you with all of me and nothing is about to change that. Please don't be scared. I'll always be here with you. I'll always be here for you. Alright? I love you. Thank you. 
okay? I, I know I shouldn't be here, but I couldn't help it. You cannot help it. What, what's wrong? Is everything all right? What's the matter, girl? This is my sister. And I hate me. She doesn't like me. She doesn't appreciate my presence in this house. Anything I do for her, she doesn't like it. She doesn't appreciate me. When, when I cook for her, she doesn't eat my food. When I go to, to sit with her and, and just to keep her company, she doesn't even appreciate it. She doesn't like me. She hates me. She hates me. Miguel. Yeah. Your sister doesn't hate you. All right? She loves you. But look, that woman is going through a tough time right now. She's going through a difficult phase in her life. And if you ask me, I think that we as the people around her need to show her a great deal of support and understanding. Do you understand? She doesn't make me understand that. She doesn't. You don't understand. She hates me. I can feel it. She, she doesn't like me. I, I think I should just go back. Pack my things and just go back to the States. No. Hasn't come to that. All right. Your sister loves you. And look, we want you here. We don't want you to leave. No. Your family, remember? Yes. We want you here. We need you here. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. okay? Okay. We want you here. And I mean, especially me. I mean, your, your presence here has really helped. You know, we're lifting some of the burden, but it's okay. Okay. Don't, 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 don't be like this now. All right? Mm. Okay? Okay. Great. So, I need you to go back to your room. You're also pushing me away. You're sending me away. I'm not pushing you away. I just feel it's later. You should be in your room. All right? As regards what we talked about, don't worry. I'll take care of it. I'll speak to Ella on your behalf. But things will be fine. I promise you, in time, the both of you would click again. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, what was that for? Why did you do that? Come on, John. What are you afraid of? Am I not woman enough? Kill that. Who is that? It's me, um, Anita. What are you doing here? I didn't call you, did I? No, no, ma. I'm sorry. You didn't call me. But I feel like I owe you as a duty. Something before I go. What? Are you here to hurt me because I asked you to leave my house? No. No, ma. Ah, me, I cannot hurt you. In fact, you have been very good to me since I started working for you. And... Because I've been noticing some things in this house, I decided to come and tell you. Sir, you be careful. What are you talking about? You've been noticing what? Hmm. Oga John and your sister Auntie Gail. I've been noticing them together. What about them? The other night, I saw Auntie Gail coming out from Oga's room. You know Oga's room is upstairs and Auntie Gail's room is downstairs. Me, I thought it was somehow. Do you think she's sleeping with my husband? <sighs> Madam. That one, me, I don't know. But because of what I've been noticing, I thought it was strange. And he said, I should come and tell you before I go. Anita, Madam. you have to stick with me. I want to trust you this once. Go and get your things. You're spending the night here with me. We have a lot to do at dawn. <clears throat> okay, ma.
What have I done? God, what have I done? What have I done? How could Gail do this to my sister? What, what, what is this? What is going on here? Why couldn't I resist her temptation? What the... Anita, Anita is not in the house. Will you just stop right there and get What do you mean, Ella is not in the Ella house? Ella and Anita are not in the house. They are nowhere to be found. What are you talking about? I, I, I don't know. Get off. She come on this morning. She went out. Where did she go? She come on with the other girl. And she tell me, say, man, don't tell anybody. All right. Um, how long was it? I'm gonna this morning. And she even wake me up, sir. Marissa, I don't feel safe in that house anymore. For my husband to be having a secret affair with my sister under my nose, no, that portends a great danger for me. But are you sure that we're really doing something? I mean, look, Anita, did, did you really see them? I mean, were they really, you know? Yes, ma'am. But Barista, it could have been anyway. Anita doesn't have any reason to lie against my husband, does she? Yeah, you're right. She doesn't. What would be her game? All I need now is for you to get me a safe place to stay for a while so I can reason on my next line of action. Okay, if that's what you want. I'll make a few calls. But rather, let me use the internet. Somewhere safe. Yes, somewhere safe. So what do we do now? All right, Dad. Okay.
Adil. This is Gil. Who else are you expecting to be calling at this time? It sounded uh, really agitated when we spoke on the phone. And, you know, for a moment, I thought that um, maybe my wife is missing the presentation. Well, what exactly is going on between you and your wife? <laughs> what are you talking about? How do you mean? Your wife came here earlier today. And she was? Yes. All right, great. That's, um, that's very good. So where is she currently? Because I was already making a case for the police. You've not answered my question. What is going on between you and your wife? To be honest with you, Barisa, I really don't know where the question is coming from. Well, your wife seems to think that you, you're not interested in her anymore. You, you don't care about what's happening around her lately. All right. Tell me, what are you getting at? Okay. I'll put it to you straight. Your wife feels you're having an affair. You're sleeping with your sister-in-law, right? Man. Man. Is there a way we can put a call that was to my wife and just find out her clarification? Listen, Nasa, this is not a good time at all. All right, I don't have time on my hands for what you're talking about. I just told you now that my wife just disappeared, and as you speak, I have no knowledge of her whereabouts. How do you think that makes me feel? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, should I say I don't know? Or should I say? And that for some reason doesn't want me to know where she is. What? Ten million for what, Nosa? Where do you expect me to get that kind of money from? Huh? Get it from Ella. Nosa, do you think I'm joking here? Um, listen, man. This... Like I said before, it's not a good time. All right, can you just try somewhere else, find a solution to the problem and just leave me be. I'm undergoing a lot of crisis right now. All right, let me sort myself out and I'll speak to you later. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, Have you found Ella yet? If I did, wouldn't she be in this house with us right now? But I just heard you on the phone saying she obviously doesn't want you to know. That's suggestive enough. Since your knives dropped on my conversation, well, your sister for some reason ran into the barrister. I told the barrister something that I still find very confusing and shocking. What was that? It's about the other night, Gail. What? Ella, according to the barrister, has it on good account that you and I had an affair the other night. Now, how she knows that for, for sure, I don't know. But she knows. How? What is how? You don't know what an affair is anymore? How does she know? How does she know? When you were humping me, you didn't know. Permit me to tell you why you've been invited to this impromptu meeting. It's actually on the insistence of your CEO here, who um, instructed. Sorry, sorry, Barista. Please, I would like to know who and who are present in this meeting. Oh, very well then. Please, can you all formally introduce yourselves? Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Paul um, Parson. 
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Sir Frederick Abebe. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ola Williams. Good morning, everyone. My name is Blessing Okaf. Uh, well, you all know me. I am Barrister Mildred. Yeah, I'm on my way there now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, dear. No, no, no. Just keep off for now. Stay off. All right. Um. Yeah. I'll see you later. Bye. Driver, please hurry up, okay? Um. Even though I can no longer make use of my eyes. I still run the affairs of this company under the supervision and jurisdiction of my personal and company attorney, Barrister Mildred. It's on the premise of all that that I decided to call for this board meeting to rearrange the managerial top echelon of this company. And to clarify the issue better, Barrister Mildred will now put you through the steps to be taken on this decision of mine. Um, Barista, please. Okay, thank you, madam. Well, uh, board members of Shin Group of Companies, I wish to let you know that your CEO here, Mrs. Ella Oruro, has instructed me to prepare a document granting her father here, Sir Frederick Abebe, the right to run this company as the CEO. Well, Please, under the supervision and directives of Mrs. Aurora herself. Now, here's the document. You have to look through it, Sir Frederick, and sign the necessary portion. Please go through it and sign the section and it's back to you. Then there's a document in my office that I'll send to all of you to go through and study it and then get back to me. Yes. Do I need to sign anything? Yes, you do. You need to sign the right. Excuse me. Hello? Hello? Stop it! Why? You don't have to sign this. Trust me. You don't have to sign this, okay? It's not that stuff. You don't do it. Trust me. What are you doing here? Marissa, what is going on here? Why, why would you sit down here and then let this happen? I thought we had an agreement, right? You, you, you really don't expect me to just... How did this man get in here? Johnny yes. man, don't do this. This is not the purpose of this. You can see we're in serious board meeting. Then how do you understand what's going on there? Young man, can you just please stay out of us? Okay? I am your husband. I love you with all of me. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? You don't have to sign this document. Do you hear me? Let's do it. Please, do not John, put yourself not... in a position to be coerced into doing something that your heart would not accept. Don't do this. Trust me on this one, I beg you. Okay, please don't do it. Say who? And who the hell do you think you are telling my daughter what to do and what not to do? When did you become her ca guardian counselor? What do you expect, sir? This girl is not your daughter, sir. Can you please? I'm lying to everyone here. Excuse me. I said, out of this place. Get off the fire. Out of here. 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 Out Thank you so much. Thank you for taking time out to come see me. I appreciate it. So here, I, I just go back in and I heard you and uh, police custody, so I had to rush to see you immediately. What happened? Well, sir. If I say I don't know, it would look like I'm lying, right? What do you mean? You mean you just woke up from your dreams and found yourself in a police net? Oh, well, I will tell you what I know. And this is what I know. Some people, some group of people somewhere, 
They are plotting really hard to take away everything that my wife's mother labored for over the years and preserved for Ella. And I turn and do all of that. I see through it and I intercept that move and I'm here. Now, does that make me guilty? Oh, hold on. Did you try to stop them? And in fact, what, what transpired with the entire board staff? No, sir. As it is right now, you know my wife's condition, right? And you know that in her present condition, she really cannot function as expected as the CEO of the machine group of companies. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now, the stepfather, Safed Abebe, has been clamoring for that position, asking that he's allowed, you know, to run the affairs of the company on the interim in my wife's stead. No, sir, you're my friend. You know I have very strong instincts. It didn't go down well with me. I discussed with Ella. She was equally very skeptical about it. Okay? But all of a sudden, you know, I got some kind of information that Ella was being coerced, you know, into signing some kind of document at the company. This document that I'm talking about now is also prepared by the family's lawyer, her company's attorney, by Mr. Mildred. Now, it looks all confusing, but to cut a long story short, I was able to get down on time to stop that move. Now, Fred didn't find it funny at all. All right, he got a bit physical with me, got me whisked out of that premises, and got really, really mad. And, and yeah. Now, again, my friend, does that make me look bad? Just like that? Just like that. So, as it is right now, what's going to happen? Well, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't have all the ideas in the world, but you're here. Right? You have to help me. I'm not going to stay in here forever. So first off, I think you should help me contact um, Mr. Mildred. We will hold on. The same barrister that prepared the controversial documents? What for? Um, no, sir. Calm down. All right. You won't understand. As it is right now, I am incapacitated. All right. Money, phones, nothing. Okay? I need someone on the outside. At least who knows the story, who understands the whole picture. So please, just get in contact with her for me and let me do the rest. Can you help me do that, please? Yeah, um, I'll do that for you. You know, but in all honesty, you know, John, I'll tell you as a friend, I I didn't think you should have taken this whole thing so personal. You know. Just let it be, you know, as it is right now. That's what I can do. Alright, I gotta go right now. I'll see you next time. Alright? Alright. Tired of drinking. You had too much to drink last night during the all night party you threw in celebration of your new status. And now that we're about going out, you started drinking all over again. Why? I'm sorry, baby. You know, the talk of becoming the new CEO of my late wife's company is so overwhelming. I never want to forget. <laughs> Bruno! Bru Why are you calling him? He should be out there waiting for us. I must be drunk again. Alright, darling. Okay, it's okay. Let's okay. Let's oh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, my dear. Why were you hesitant to enter trust? We have met before, right? Okay. Do you have a phone? Wow, that is strange. In this modern age, you don't have a phone. It's, it was my mother's decision for me not to have a phone. She did not want her personal aid to, to have a phone. Okay, that is quite understandable. Maybe for her own personal security reasons. But you can still use a phone ordinarily. Mm, yeah. 
Yes, I used to have a phone, but I misplaced it. So after that, that's all right. Yeah, I want you to have this. It's a phone. But sir, Take but, it. Go ahead. sir, me, I'm scared. Though, what am I going to explain to my madam now? Listen, you don't have to tell her anything. She's blind, remember. Most importantly, just listen attentively. Let me explain to you why I'm giving you this phone. On no account will you contact anyone with this phone except my daughter, Gail. Hmm? So when you go back inside, Gail will give you more directives on what to do with this phone. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why are you gaping as if you're staring at a ghost? Hmm? You should be proud that you're going to be a proud owner of an expensive phone. I know that your six months salary will not be able to buy this. But what, what are you trying to do? My madam's husband. He just came back. He's going to go and alert my madam that I'm not in the house. I need to go, please. It's okay. You don't have to live in such a hurry. That will give more room for doubts and suspicion. In a situation like this, you just relax your brain and come up with an idea of what to tell him so that he can believe your you know, candid excuses. Hmm? And you're leaving something, please. Something very important. Please open the door. I'll lock it, please. Right, take the phone and I'll open the door for you. Like I told you, on no account do you contact anyone else with this phone. Yes, sir. Just tell him a little lies and then girl will do the rest for you. Okay? Okay. Okay. Open the door, please, sir. I'm very sorry, Ma. I didn't mean to take you for granted. I didn't know the essence of the phone. Not until I witnessed what happened at the board meeting. Please, don't think of me as an ingrate. I really appreciate everything you have done for me. I will never do anything to hurt you, God knows. I'll protect you with my life, please. Anita. Yes, ma. Who has been calling you on the phone all this while? Have you talked with her ever since we left the house? No. Are you sure? Yes, ma. Anita, are you assuring me I can trust you? Yes, ma. With my life, ma. Now listen. It's okay, just stop crying. I will give you my husband's number and that of my staff. I have the numbers in my head. You will dial the number and I will talk. Yeah, well, first of all, help me up. Krista, what's, what's happening? What's going on? How would you ask me that? I didn't like your behavior the other day. You, you, you knew what was going on. You didn't have to come in there and disturb all the, the meeting. What did you hope to achieve by doing that? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Now you've ended up in here. Well, I couldn't help it, the truth had to be told. Oh, really? By the way, I asked Nosa to call, to call you. I'm happy you're here. Uh, and who is Nosa? I didn't get any call from any Nosa. What are you talking about? Nosa is my friend. He was here earlier in the day to, 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 to visit me. I told him to call you since my phones and every other thing have been seized by the policeman. I didn't receive any call from any of your friends. Period. 
because I can't believe you did that. What are you talking about? You did receive a call from me. I did not receive any call from anyone. I mean, look, look, look at you, 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 you've just messed yourself up. Ended up confusing Ella. She's so distraught and everything. Was that your intention? You knew exactly where we were coming from. All you had to do was stay calm, but no! You think you, you, you bamboozled your way into everything and anything. So who called you? How did you, how did you, how did you get here? Yeah, Ella was the one that called me. Ella called you? How is that possible? I mean, if I remember correctly, after the last attack, she didn't have a phone to her as well anymore. Yeah, she doesn't have a phone, but maybe she got a phone from what's her name, Anita, or any of her aides at that point. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess I'll just have to look for a way to get you out of here. You just have to, you need to, to behave yourself by the time you get out. Are we on the same page? Are we? Krista, what is happening to my wife? Where is she? That is why I am here. Okay? Oh. You need to help me in this one. Just need to. Have you had any news about Ella or about yet? Not at all. Even Barrister Mildred doesn't seem to know. As for Barrister, I don't trust her at all. I think there's something she's hiding from us. Whatever for? Are we under any kind of suspicion? I don't know, but that's how I feel. Dad, in the midst of all this, there's one very vital thing that I'm so happy about. Guess what? And what is that? I'm pregnant. <laughs> what? How can you get pregnant at a time like this, girl? Dad, do we have a problem about me being pregnant at this time? So what were you thinking? Dad, I'm just waiting for Terry to get here. You see the father of the day? Dad, like I said, I'm just waiting for him to get here. Don't you think you're drinking too much of that? What difference does it make if I get drunk? A happy mind has a tendency to make merry. What do you think? Still having fun, Ella, yet, Dad. Who is there? Terry. You're welcome, sir. Oh, thank you. Terry. Oh, how are you? Yes, sir. You're welcome. Oh, man. Okay, future girl. <sighs> Any lead so far? Not yet, sir. No one seems to know where about. Not even her husband? No, I, I guess not. Oh. Terry, you do not guess. We need to find out Ella's whereabouts. Time is running out on us. If this whole idea is not important to both of you, it is important to me. 
Who says so, Dad? If it wasn't important to me, I wouldn't be carrying his baby in the first place. Carrying okay, what? Are you pregnant? For who? For who? Now let me get this whole thing straight, girl. What is this talk about getting pregnant in the first place? Dad, have you forgotten the clause that brought this whole plan together? That is rubbish. I want nonsense. Whatever your motives are as far as this issue, it has no bearing to what we have on ground. It has, Dad. How? Ella couldn't give him a baby. Even after the attack, she tried but failed. So the good sister comes me to the rescue. Ta-da! Then you got pregnant for John, right? Yes. Good summary, John, indeed. That's the plan. Now, like I told you earlier, it has nothing. It does not fit into the plan and ideas we have. Does it, Terry? I guess not, sir. Anita, yes, madam. Has the barrister called? No, not yet. Anita, we have to leave here. Eh? What are you talking about? Are you going to tell me what to do? No. I said we are leaving here. Ah, ah. Madam, what well, the barrister said, we should not go anywhere. Anita, yes, madam. Pack our bags, go outside and get it. You know, just get everything ready. We'll go out and get the cat. No, my love. Are you sure about this? Yes. <laughs> Please get everything ready. Okay, okay, don't worry. <laughs> Are you there? Yes, madam. Could you please check this phone for me? Let me know the number or the name. Oh, it's Barrister Mildred. Okay, please pick the call and let me talk. Thank you. Hello? For goodness sake, Ella, where are you? Where are you, please? Barista, who, who else is there with you? I'm alone, nobody else. I've left that place. 
I know because I've been there and they told me you had left. Ella, what's going on? You've been moving from place to place. You, we need to see Ella. You need to come in. You know, no, you know what's happening out there. It's dangerous. How is my husband? And how come you haven't called since I called to tell you about my, my, my fears? You have not heard from your husband because he was arrested on the day of the incident. Everything he had was taken from him, including his phone. But it's okay now, he's free. And uh, he needs to get in touch with you. And I've already intimated him on all that has been going on. Why hasn't he called? And are you forgotten you don't have a phone, so how can he reach you? Eh? And uh, look, I need to bring you in. It's dangerous. Look, your life is in danger wherever you are. Barista. What have you done concerning my decision to resign my earlier move concerning my stepfather? No, not to worry, Ella. That has been taken care of, all right? There's no problem with that. We've sorted it out. Just tell me where you are and I'll come pick you. Ella, it is dangerous. Please. Don't worry about me. Just get close to my husband. Call this number and let me speak with him. Then I can believe your assurance. And only then will I let you know of my location. Okay, okay, Ella, if you insist. I'll be with him soon. I'll talk to you. Just take good care of yourself, okay? All right. Bye. Going on. Who did you see? Auntie Gail. I saw Auntie Gail with one man. He said, I thought they pulling yeah. us. How did they find us? I don't know. I don't know. Please. Hey, driver, those people are assassins. Please. And they must not catch us. Please drive as fast as you can. Okay, madam. Please, please, I will pay you any amount. Just drive fast, please. They must not catch us, please. I need to have clothes. How close are they? I nice them. I can't believe we've lost them. What was that? Listen, you need to realize that. I, I don't stay here. I don't know if it's about me like drama does. Okay? Oh, that, that's enough of that excuse, please. Enough of it. You had them right on your nose and you lost them. Huh? Enough, enough, enough of this ranting. Enough of it. So why don't we stop it? Let's catch up with them now. They're gone. They're gone. You have to stop. No, let's just go. Get out of this. You're gone! We've lost them. Are you sure? Yes. I can't see them again. Anita, check. Check where. They're not here. 
I've told you we've lost them, madam. This area is off their mark. And I know this area like the back of my hand. We've lost them. Thank you very much, eh? I will pay you three times my earlier charge, okay? Okay, madam. And Anita, please check and make sure we are not being followed. Madam, you have nothing to be worried about. They are gone. Okay. Um, Anita. Yes, ma'am. Take this. Take this phone. Call by Mr. Mildred. Okay. Driver, you're, you're sure we've lost them, eh? <laughs> Madam, they are gone. Trust me. Okay. Gail, I can't believe you're telling me this. You mean you saw Ella and you couldn't make anything tangible out of it. A girl will have been searching for all this while. How could two of you be so careless? That I told you it wasn't my fault. It was Terry's fault. What about Anita? Have you tried calling her number? Dad, I told you. Her number is off. She's not reachable. She must have told Ella everything by now. I just got information that John has been bailed. What do we do now? Time is running out. Your phone, I've searched everywhere for you. I mean, I've looked everywhere for you. Where have you been? What happened? I got involved at the police. What? Your father didn't tell you. My father? <laughs> what could have led to you having a fight with my father that involved the police? No, I thought you didn't know about it. I don't. Oh, you still don't? Well, I'm rather too tired to discuss that right now. Ask your dad. Okay. Any news about Ella yet? No leads yet. So you mean no news? Like nothing? You don't know her whereabouts? Like no news about Ella yet? Keep searching. Okay. Have you had anything to eat? He's back, so you can come again. I know. Well, he came. I tried to psych him, but, you know, all I'm getting is just negative response. I don't know why, but I just feel that he's not telling the truth. Well, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, play, you know, with him some more so that he'll be able to open up a bit. I think that's what I want to do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. Bye.
is about this time. You don't seem to realize how all this is making me feel that my only sister is out there missing for days without a trace and I can't do anything about it. I, I mean, she's just a, a blind, helpless girl out there somewhere and I can't do anything. But... Do you know who could have told her about our affair? Um, um, Gil, stop it. All right? Can we not go over that again? Look, before you came in here, I was rested, all right? I need a moment to myself so I can think. So if you don't mind, can you please just get out? John, you don't seem bothered about this whole issue at all. Is there something I can tell you? Gil, I am tired. Get out. You're tired. You're tired. I'm talking about your missing wife here, and you're telling me you're tired. How dare you? What is this? Huh? What is this? What's your problem? What's my problem? What's my problem? You! You! Act like you don't care. Your wife is missing you. You act like you don't care. Ask her why. You everything I come about is you. There's something you're not telling me. Swear to me that you don't know where she is. Swear it. What has come over me? Everything has come over me. What has come over me? You are asking me. Since the people do not know where she is, you have no responsibility. If you don't receive my top right now, I will knock you out. You will knock me out. Okay, go ahead. Knock me out. Knock me out. Get off me right now. Get off! Get out. Don't make me push you. Cheat his daughter, spell out of my goodness, you will never get a chance to try that rubbish with me again. But in this lifetime, You all know this is the first meeting I am having since I was installed the chairman and chief executive of the Shin Group. This meeting is necessitated by my desire and decision to bring on board the train my amiable daughter, Gail Abebe, and her associate, Mr. Terry Makando. I know that this will come as a surprise to you, but like they say, the only thing that is constant in life is change. Well, for the records, Gail here will take over from me as the new managing director of the company, while Mr. Terry Makando will become the new corporate affairs manager. Excuse me, sir, Mr. Paul. How dare you raise your hands while I'm still talking? What gross insubordination? Sorry, sir. Well, for your information, people, I am the chairman and chief executive officer of this company. And I have the right 
to act and take decisions on matters that are of importance to this company. And bringing these two people on board is one of such. What's happening here? How are you doing? I am supposed to be part of this meeting. Or should I call it charade of lies and deceit? I beg your pardon, Barrister. Secondly, <laughs> your stay on the stable is not fast. Yes. For your information, Barrister, I am the chairman and chief executive officer of this company. And a document to that effect that was prepared by you was duly signed by me under your supervision. Sir, a baby, those documents you signed are fake documents. Here are the real documents. Well, the company seal. The document you signed had no company seal and had removed the vital information. But you know, in your greed to become the CEO of the company, you didn't even look. You just went ahead and signed away your life. No. No? No. Lies. Lies. Please call She's me. not lying. You and your cohorts are the liars and the conspirators here. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're under arrest, sir. Under arrest for what? Are you out of your senses? No, sir. Because I'm talking to you. What are you doing here? Oh, no. Please arrest them. Please. Oh. Take them out. Sir, please. Let's go to your under arrest. Oh, sir, so just so you know, you're under arrest. I'm just going to arrest them. You're under arrest. But you're taking up an attention. Can you please get off? For your information, I am still the chairman and CEO of this company. You better take away your litany of soldiers away from her. I'm going to explain that. Please, not your Please. Problem, and we will never be. Officer, please take this man away. Madam. You heard my father. I'm going nowhere. No. Madam, you don't want to be harassed. Please wait. Please wait. Is he still here? He's leaving. Please wait. Please. Please. Thank you very much. Take your hands off. Please get the CBA. Take your hands off me. Gentlemen of the board, we're really sorry for all that has happened. But uh, we're here to assure you that everything will be working. Well, truth be told, Barrister, I must give it to you. I think that was really, really a smart move on your part. You know, at some point you threw me off. I, I was, I was totally confused. I didn't know what to think. If you were part of the manipulation or not. You know? Well, I guess I've been in the law profession long enough not to smell a cheap blackmail when I see one. You see, Sir Baby was always acting funny, asking certain questions, making certain moves. Then on Ella's directive, I decided to set the bait. And you know what happened? He got right into the trap. Who glad that? Oh my goodness. Uh, Oh, well, but above all, I am really, really happy that I have my family back. Yeah, I am glad too. Tell you what, Barrister. Tell my dad is expecting. Oh, wow! <laughs> Tell is expecting? I can't believe this. Oh, congratulations to both of you. Ah, this is like Thank you. Thank you, Barrister. You know, I must say I feel so restored that finally mm -hmm. my enemies have been put in their proper place. Mm -hmm. Needless to say how shocked I am that it turned out to be the very people I call family. Well, I guess that's the irony of life for you, you know. 
I mean, yeah, we all have enemies out there, but the worst kind of enemies are the ones that live with you. They are your family members, the ones that live in the, in the four corners of the same house with you. You know, you sleep with them, you play with them, you laugh with them, you, you joke with them, and then they turn around and betray you. I mean, come on, that is awful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the life's lessons. Yeah. Life's lessons. I must have that by the student's wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At some point, Prada was part of that <laughs> drama. You won't blame her. She was scared, and um, you know, there's so much going on there. Ah, uh, it's okay. I just thank God for people like you. You've been fantastic, Barista. You've been, you've been awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and uh, for someone like Anita. Yep, absolutely. That um, wonderful angel that used their tool of communication against her. If only they had known better, they would have given her that one in the first place. But hey, that's life. So, where is Anita? I asked her to take the day off and get some rest. <laughs> A well deserved rest, I must say. A well deserved one. I lost my wife, Mirabel, a year after the birth of our first and only child, Gail. And I strive all through to take care of my girl. Then I met Helen, a wealthy widow, who also had a two-year-old daughter, Emanuela. Helen and I had a lot in common, as we were both caught in the spot of the star spouse. So we struck it off, and suddenly we got engaged. Helen advised that we moved in with her. So we started living together as one happy family. I took Ella as my own biological daughter, and Helen took girl the same way. And the two little girls related well as blood sisters. So things started moving very well until the moment when Helen brought me into her business empire as a managing director, a position which I held for almost two decades without blemish. Somehow, Helen started being erratic and overbearing, making it obvious that she was the boss. I didn't quite like it. And when I complained about my displeasures to her, she flares up. And it became a constant reminder that I was probably a gold digger. <sighs> Even my daughter, Gail, was not spared because she was given a half portion of what Ella, her daughter, received. And this created a rift and a crack into the nucleus of once happy family. I had to stand up as a man and defend my integrity and pride before Helen reduces me to nothingness. So one day, after a series of marital squabbles and unrest, Fred. Yes, dear. I'll be traveling to the States next month with Ella. So I'll be out of the country for a while to take care of the external spring of the company. Really? Why Ella? A special reason, my dear. Say for the fact that I want to enroll her in Harvard University to study business management. Wow, that's good news. Why didn't you tell me? No, it's not like that. It's just that I didn't take it to heart the first time Mom mentioned it. Oh, I'm happy for you. Mom, what about me? Mm. You're still in school, my dear. Finish your first, then we'll decide what to do next, okay? Fred, what's the problem? It's okay, nothing. No problem. My dear girl, I'm glad you can see things clearly. That your mother is marginalizing us in preference to Ella. And you have refused to accept my own assertion of issues. But dad, if mom decides to send Ella abroad for studies instead of me, I see nothing wrong with that. It's still within the family. 
stop acting blind and senseless. Now, why do you think she's sending Ella abroad to study a course on business management? Because she has future plans to make Ella the overall CEO of the company. Really? Of course. Now, another issue. Why do you think I, your father, has remained on the board of this company as a main managing director for so many years? It's simple. She doesn't have plans for you and I. Dad, you speak as if you and I are not part of the family. Of course we are not. Can't you get it? We are not. How? Okay. I think this is the right time for me to let the cat out of the bag. Helen is not your biological mother. And Ella is not my biological daughter. I don't understand. That's the truth. I opened up to my daughter. From that point on, a sense of vendetta was aroused and everything was never the same. After finding out the truth about my family, I found out that all my stepmother ever cared about was her child, Ella. She paid me little or no attention at all. Everything around the house, the company, revolved around Ella. But this is someone who's supposed to take care of me like her daughter. She was supposed to be my mother. Yes. Ella tried to play its cordial between us. But who was she fooling? Not me. Everything she was doing was to please her mother. But what broke the camel's back was that day during the will reading transmission of my stepmother. And from that point on, my anger and envy knew no bounds. I sought out ways to get even with her all by myself. Until I met my boyfriend Terry. That was heaven. <laughs> You know, it's indeed a small world, you know. I mean, knowing that you're actually my friend's sister-in-law. I mean, I, I think to wonder why, you know, everything is just falling into place. How do you mean? <clears throat> Listen, what if, if we end up marrying each other? You know, it's going to be like two friends marrying two sisters. That would be a hell of a headline. Yeah. I'm not interested in that headline. Why? Ever since your friend got married to a girl as rich as ever. Yeah. Has it been able to offer you or do anything for you at all? No, I mean, I have I've written a couple of proposals out to John for funding, but nothing has come out yet. In fact, I'm beginning to wonder because the John I know we gladly fund the project by me. Really? Mm. And have you thought about what could be the cause? Thank you. 
Isn't it obvious that the wife controls a greater percentage of the resources? John is just a medium stock broker on the front. Whatever the wife says when it comes to their finances goes just like that. I know this is this is this is strange. Man, because I've hung out with John and his wife a couple of times. And she don't strike me as a, as a, as a stingy person. I mean she's free-hearted. <laughs> Don't be deceived, darling. Don't. It's all a front. <laughs> you don't have good opinion about your sister, do you? I don't. I don't. And that's why I'm willing to do anything, anything to make sure that I get back what she and her wicked mother denied me and my father all these years. Darling, don't you think you deserve better from your friendship with John and your relationship with me? I visited John again. No sadly that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, John, how's business? Ah, oh, I said, thank God. For his mercies, we're, we're pushing, we're doing great. <laughs> so tell me, what's, uh, what's been happening with you now? Uh, me, I... I'm okay. You're great, huh? Great. I know. <laughs> just you in that house. Yeah. All by yourself. Who's that I know. <laughs> but someone seriously, come on. Are you even considering settling down? Look, I will talk about it. All right. No, I am talking about it. When will you settle down? When are you going to do this? Because you ain't got all that time. You think you got it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, John. Well, you know, on a more serious note, you know, being married is, you know, greatly dependent on um, your financial capacity as a man. So yes, I will get married when I get what I'm looking for. Really? Who lied to you? Who told you you'd have to break it back? To get married? No, 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 sir, listen. Let me educate you on this, all right? I'm the married one here, okay? So let me lecture you. The first thing you'd have to do as a man is to make up your mind to settle down. Then find yourself a good girl, and every other thing shall be added unto you. Remember the Bible also tells us that he who finds a good wife, finds a good thing, and obtains favor from God. John, you make it sound so easy and funny, but yet you're yet to assist me from the project I bought before you. Remember? Yeah. You know, obviously that's the tilt that way. No, sir. We've been through this before. Really? 
So the fact that I'm married to a rich girl does not mean that I'm going to wheel out cash just like you expect. She doesn't want that way, man. You know me. We've been friends for years. You know me. If it wasn't my part, I would gladly do it for you. All right? I understand you've got business plans and, and all, but my wife doesn't think so. No, listen to yourself, John. Listen to yourself talk. It's all about my wife, my wife, my wife. So where are you in the scheme of things as the head of the family? All right. You know, I'm going to ignore that sarcasm and give an answer to that question. My wife is a shrewd businesswoman, a one very shrewd with her finances. Right? And now, at some point, I've been able to bring up a few projects that you talked to me about. She looked at it and told me that she doesn't think that it's a wise move. She, she termed it to be a non-profitable and wasteful. So really, if you ask me, I think that the right thing to do would be probably to look at those projects again and see how you can make it lucrative and realistic. Hold, hold on, John. Hold on a minute. Ella said all this. Yeah, she did. So what did you say in defense? Nothing. <laughs> Take your drink, Lassa. At this point, I knew and believed what girl told me. And as time went on, I decided to be part of the grand plan to get a portion of my flesh from Fred and his wife for what they cost me. So our baby, Fred our baby, Gil and I got together to hash a plan, or do I say, to make known our mutual motives. I think this new idea will work, but the problem is how to execute it. What new idea? I have been thinking of how best to maximize and achieve our plot. And then suddenly it dawned on me that for us to be able to achieve our aim, we must first of all destabilize the source. Destabilize the source? How do you mean? How do we do that? Oh, little children, little brains. Yeah? How come? I think it was a good of you. Now here is the picture. Hmm? If we are really to get anything tangible out of our plot, we must first of all render Ella ineffective. How do we do that, Dad? Good question. Presently, she is the CEO of SEAL Group, right? And have you thought of a situation whereby she loses her pregnancy, which is very, very important to the clause her mother, my late wife, left on her instructionary wheel. That is one. Now, secondly, I want both of you to start thinking a situation where she loses a vital part of herself, making it impossible for her to run the office as a CEO. Now, tell me, of what use is a blind woman to herself? her husband, and her so-called corporate society. Think about it. Why is she taking so long? Patient, my friend. Yes, sir. I need you guys to do a perfect job for me. Okay? I'm gonna take a like, breakfast. Can't wait for this deal to be done. <sighs> Good job. Yeah. That's why you call us, bro. Professionals. No. Just take it easy, should be a son. Just come, just come, just come. Alright, 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 guys. Stick calm, calm, chill. Just chill, chill. 
can drive. Listen, I hope you guys hurt us so much. Just drive. Drive, no, no, no. Drive. No. drive. I can see it's not very clear, though, but like a red reflection or something. Hold on a second, hold on a second. Can you put someone on the side? Can you see my hand again? <laughs> this is good. Look up his hand. Can you see our son? Can you see him? That's the time. Oh no, I told you that I told you to find some kind of speech. I told you. Uh, this is the one I tell you about uh, tomorrow. Okay. Let's see. 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 Let's
Oh, ada di tahu saya. <laughs> oh, Mr. John Rivera. Yeah. Yes. How do you feel? I mean, considering the fact that the person you least expected to stay behind the crime was actually the culprit, Mr. Nusa, that was wrong. Oh, well, um, it's quite painful to know that the people you trust the most could uh, at some point become the brain behind your pain, you know. Um, it, it's not shocking that um, he's very dubious dealings were unraveled at some point because um, every day for the thief and one day for the other, you know. Quite sad, but hey, it is well, life goes on. <laughs> okay, so, um, what are your plans for the future? The future? <laughs> this is the future. <laughs> this young man is the future. The future of the rural family. His name is Nemeka Ogoro. Nemeka means God has given, God has done well. All right? He is the heir to the dynasty of Shindu of Congress. And this is the young man you're going to be speaking with in a few years from now. <laughs> Ma, how do you manage to balance your personal and professional life? Well, uh, it can't be easy, I must say. But I have thought, been gone all the way, and my darling was back here. Yeah. It demands what they say, <laughs> but I have my mom here, and we've been doing it together. Yeah, and in addition, I would like to say that um, it's a cliche notion that um, it's a man's world. I beg to disagree. I just think it's a world that can be made perfect with the two parties involved. Yeah. You know, if you guys agree um, on a lot of things and on a lot of levels, uh, you find peace, you find happiness. That's evident um, in what you see here today. You know, um, and in conclusion, I'd like to say that a family that lives together actually is a family that has decided to live together and live through different perfections of their families. Because there's no perfect man, there's no perfect man. You know, you, you try to turn what you have into perfection. What is this I hear? What I hear, I fear. I don't understand what is happening. Surely the day must come for reckoning. I heard, I heard she said this and and he said he that. Said that. They said this and that. Said that. Whoa. Whoa! I heard he did this and and she did that. They did this and that. That's what I heard. Ooh, a broken heart. A brutal, a brutal task Powered by greed And by need to succeed By enemies that is so mean That's the way of the world 